Good morning, church. Oh, let me hear you. Good morning, church. To Dr. and Mrs. Ward, to Dr. and Mrs. Bell, Board of Directors, staff and faculty, friends and families, underclassmen, classes 2020 and classes 2021. Woohoo! Today, I would like to draw your attention to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And it reads like this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Today, I want to title my sermon as this, The Power of the Message. The Power of the Message. Two weeks ago, my wife told me an amazing news that she is pregnant with our second baby. Such a great news, such an exciting news. But you know what? There's a shift that is going to happen with that news. There's a shift, there's a change that is going to happen with that great news that I will get to know after nine months. All of my schedules, all of my work, all of my sleeps, everything is going to change. There's a transformation that is going to happen with that great news. It is the same as well with the gospel. Every word that we preach, every word that you utter from your mouth, there's a power in that word. There's a power that transforms people's life. There's a power that restores people's bodies. There's transformation that happens when we preach the gospel. We know God created us in his own image, in his own power, in his own purpose. In the same purpose that we have in the message of salvation. And the purpose is to redeem man to God. To redeem man from God. We all know what happened in the Garden of Eden. Through the man's sin, sinful nature. There was a separation between man and God. There was a gap between man and God. But how many of you know that God gave that price through Jesus Christ and redeemed us? Through Jesus' sacrifice, he redeemed us from that gap and he gave us back that freedom. Nothing in this world can bring that freedom. In Romans chapter 3, verses 23, it reads like this. For everyone has sinned. We all have fallen short of God's glorious standard. We all sin. We all deserve the punishment of death. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it reads like this again. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life eternal life even though we had sin even though sin entered this world how many of you know that through Jesus Christ we have that eternal life eternal gift church Jesus redeemed us nothing nothing in this world can redeem us nor our riches nor our diploma nor our graduation certificate nothing not your works Nothing can redeem us this morning. Only thing that redeem, uh, redeem us is Jesus Christ. Church, please understand, non nothing that we earned this morning or today, we deserved it. Nothing, nothing in this world, all our life, all our luxuries, nothing we deserve today. But we need to understand that Jesus paid the price for you and me for, for come here and have this luxurious life. Never, never forget that. As we have a purpose for our salvation, there is also a place for salvation. And that place is only in Jesus Christ. 
there's only one place and that place is in Jesus Christ. There is no other name, no other name. In Acts chapter 4 verse 12, it reads like this, neither there is salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind, whereby we must be saved. No, that none of the idols in this world can save us. None of the image of gods can save us. None of the other gods can save us. But how many of you know that the God we serve is all powerful? The God that we serve is alive. The God that we serve is not dead. Every knee will bow. Every tongue shall confess that our God is living God. We need to understand that, that there is a place in heaven. In John chapter 14, verse 6, it reads like this, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto me except me. What a powerful statement. How many of you know that? Our God restores the broken. Our God heals the blind. Our God makes way to the people. He does not sit in one throne and say, you know what, I'm going to have a lecture. No. When he sees broken, he goes to them, Dr. Bell. He goes to the people where there is need. Church, you need to understand that our God that you and me serve is not a God who sits in one place. He goes to you. He comes to us. So that we can have the restoration power. Just know that when we become one in Christ, He restores us. He makes us a brand new person. He makes us a brand new person. And today, this morning, you may ask, preacher, how can I get into the plan of salvation? It's very simple, church. All you got to do is three things. Number one, you got to believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. That's it, for your sins. Number two, you got to repent of your sin. All your old ways, every sin that you committed, it doesn't matter to God. Once you speak the name of Jesus, He forgives and forgets. He remembers no more. Even if you committed the, the biggest sin in this world, it doesn't matter to God. You are qualified no matter what when you speak the name of Jesus. And third, lastly, you need to confess that no other God except Jesus is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There, that's it. Three things and you are a brand new person. In, in the scripture it says, when you become brand, when you come to Christ, you are a new creature. What does that mean? That means everything that you, your past, everything that you committed, everything is buried underneath. And you become a brand new person in Christ Jesus. Today, I want to leave you with this church. Many people watching online, I want to ask you this question. Friends and families who are sitting here, if you don't know this Jesus that I'm preaching today. Friends, families who's watching me online, if you don't know this Jesus that, that I'm preaching today, I want to invite you this glorious family. I want to invite you. I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be selfish and keep the salvation towards myself. And I, I know none of these preachers and teachers want that for you. And if you know, if you want the salvation, if you want to take this step, come meet me or talk to, talk to these boards, talk to, talk to these teachers or preachers. We will gladly be happy to lead you to this Jesus because we know, we know nothing in this world, nothing can stop us from getting more closer to God. And we want this for you. We want to see the life change. Graduates, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Because this gospel 
has the power to win the lost. This gospel has the power to restore lives. That's the only one thing I got for the graduates. Preach because when we preach the gospel, there is salvation. We can see the lost being restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you.